Hello and welcome to Road TV. I'm your host today. My name is Matt Reese. I'm the owner of Road to California. Today we are interviewing Tammy Silvers of Tamarini's, who is a teacher for both our Road at Home event and our Road to California Now 2022 in-person show. Tammy, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing today? I am great. Anytime I get to talk to somebody about quilting is a great day. It is a great day. Um, so let's just jump right into the uh, meat and potatoes of this. How did you get started quilting? <laughs> I have to credit my sister-in-law with starting me quilting. She invited me to take a quilt class. And I tell the story every time I do a lecture. I did not go willingly. I went very reluctantly, drug my feet, and then I made this muddy mess of a quilt. And I still have the quilt top because it was so awful. It didn't really deserve a sandwich. You know, it didn't deserve the batting and the backing and certainly nobody to spend their time quilting it. But for whatever reason, I really can't explain it. I got the bug. And uh, I started taking quilt classes and the light bulb went off for me as a designer when I took this class and it was a sampler class. So it was, it was designed for beginners and the center of that um, quilt that we were supposed to make was a schoolhouse block. Now, me personally, I'm not a very traditional quilter. So I find no redeeming qualities in the schoolhouse block. If, if, if somebody said, what's your least favorite block, that would probably be number one on the list. But I was raised in the South. And in the South, if someone older than you or in a position of authority says to do something, your response is, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. So, it, you know, the quilt teacher said, this is what you do. The pattern says, this is what you do. So I did it. And I went through the whole six week class. Um, you know, uh, it was a perfectionist class, not my cup of tea, but I went through it. And then we had to hold up our quilts at the end of the class and people held up their samplers and they had other blocks other than the schoolhouse block in the center. And that was, that was the catalyst. It was like the pattern is only a suggestion. You can do whatever you want. Boom, that was it. And I have been obsessed with quilting ever since. Wow. So it started from a sampler house with a schoolhouse block. Yes, yes, yes. So what other big, um, let's say monumental events led to your current area of expertise of quilting today? Let's see. So I, I started teaching quilting because I had taken all of these classes and I was going to go back to school, back to college and get my teaching certificate. I, I was a high school English teacher for a little while. And um, I thought, well, how am I going to pay for college? Well, I can teach quilting. So I started teaching quilting and absolutely fell in love with that. It is, for me, such a joy to see someone come in. I've had students walk in and literally cut the tape on the box to their sewing machine in class, like never used a sewing machine before. And when they leave one of my like series classes and they're able to have a quilt top and they're able to express themselves with their, with their fabric choices, with their color choices, um, they're able to edit the pattern and they're, they're, empowered. That is such a fabulous feeling. So um, that's, that's why I started teaching. I fell in love with teaching. So then my goal was, I want to travel and teach, which is why I was so thrilled when y'all invited me. So I want to travel and teach. But what I realized very quickly was, in order for people to want me to come and teach, I needed to have something to make them want me. So I started designing. So it, was, it wasn't like I, as a little girl, always said, I want to be a fabric designer. I want to be a pattern designer. No, it was just one thing like dominoes. One thing led to another, led to another, led to another. So that's how I started teaching to pay the bills. And then I fell in love with it and then started designing 
so that I could teach more. So you design fabrics for Alan Batik, correct? That is correct. How many lines have you designed? How many lines have I designed? That is a good question. I have to, I have to go backwards. So I had Batiks go retro. I had- That was the one with the little TVs, right? Oh my gosh, that's my, I just, oh, I, I have I, a lo I was in your schoolhouse. You didn't know this. I was in your schoolhouse. <laughs> And I loved those those little TVs and the, the, the retro. I thought that was just so unique. Oh my gosh. I wish I had known that because I would have my little retro TV pin cushions here right now to really float your boat. <laughs> so yes, yes, yes. That was my first line. I was so stoked about that because that's one of those, for me, a benchmark moment, you know, that, oh, I get to design a fabric line. So yeah, I did Batiks Go Retro. I did Elements. I did Globetrotter. I did Kismet. I feel like I'm missing one. But then I have other lines with the, with fabric. You've already like I've already designed stuff that hasn't come out yet. So um, so I guess I have four under my belt, and then there are several more that are already in the works. So wow! So our our listeners can actually go find your fabric, can't they? Yes. Oh, 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 that's it. Just my type. See, I knew I was forgetting one. The one that just released, just dropped is just my type. And um, each one of these has really been a, a passion project because I, I pick something that um, is, is really near and dear to my heart. Like the first one, Batiks Go Retro. I love that, that retro vibe, that mid-century modern. And that was really the, the inspiration for that one. Um, just my type, my uncle was an elementary school principal and I have his very ancient black metal heavy typewriter with the little old fashioned keys and the old fashioned ribbon, um, uh spools and uh yeah so i've always loved that typewriter so that was like the starting point for just my type that line is is totally based off of um typewriters it's got keys and and everything super fun super fun how neat is that and they can find that at uh, their local quilt shop right if their local quilt shop carries island boutique i certainly hope so Awesome. And if they don't have it, they can always ask for it. Ask I know Caleb would love to ship them some fabric. Oh, yes. Caleb would love to. Yes. Yes. And you're going to want the whole line because because it's freaking adorable. Absolutely. And so you also design your own patterns, right? I do. I do. Yes. And those go with the fabric or are those kind of a standalone? So it's a little bit of both. I, anytime I design a fabric line, I'm going to have patterns that are going to complement that, that fabric line. Um, sometimes I get this wild hair and this just idea of, wouldn't that be fun if, and, you know, come up with a quilt pattern. And then I also work with other fabric companies, not boutique companies, but other print fabric companies designing patterns to highlight their lines. So that's what supplements my uh, pattern library, if you will. So yeah, most patterns, most, I'd say probably 75% begin with the fabric. And then the other 25% are, I really want to do this. And then it's a matter of finding the fabric to fit it. I would say that's kind of a, um something that most people wouldn't realize that a lot of pattern designers get hired by fabric companies to do something with fabric lines they may have. It's not just a fabric company makes a, fa uh, a fabric line and walks away, that there's a lot more involved and there's a lot more hands that go through the process than one might think. Well, and, and we're, as quilters, we're visual people. We're visually driven and the fabric companies know this. So it's one thing to see this beautiful bolt of fabric, right? But sometimes you're like, I don't know what I would do with that. But that's why they want to work with pattern designers because then we say, here's what you could do with that fabric. And then the quilter goes, oh my gosh, yes, I must do that right away. Give it all to me. So yes. Awesome. So you are also a, uh, let me get this correct, say, a Studio 180 certified instructor. So what went into the certification process? Because I know it's not just to fill out a form and 
in your you get it. I know Dev and Sue are very particular about their uh, certifications. <laughs> okay. You are you are so right about that. That was probably one of my most stressful moments because a friend of mine that um, works with Judy Niemeyer said, oh, Tammy, you should do a certification program. And I didn't want to do Judy Niemeyer because she was doing it and I didn't want to go head to head with her. So she suggested Deb Tucker. So I was like, okay, sure. I put in the application, then they send you the paperwork. So you have to make sample blocks and you send them in so they can inspect them front and back. Mm -hmm. No stress there. And <laughs> confession time. And I told them this after I got my certification. I had never used a Deb Tucker tool in my life. I bought all of the tools in preparation for doing the certification. Then I got the paperwork and it, it gave you, you have to make these blocks and it just showed you a line picture. That's it. And I'm not talking like half square triangle or Ohio star. No, 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 no. I'm talking these odd blocks that use different components that require the tools. And then you had to figure out which tools, right? And what size the units would be to make that block. You had to figure all of that out. That's not the hard part because if you're a quilter by nature, you get the whole math of things. But um, I had to watch YouTube videos of Deb <laughs> demoing the tools. And then I had to make the blocks and remake the blocks and remake them. So they were perfect because I wanted them to be perfect. So I would, and then I'm sitting on pins and needles after I mail the blocks in waiting for them to approve me. <laughs> so they did. And then that's the next step. Then you go for six full days full days of instruction, you learn a ton. So when somebody says they're a certified instructor, at least for Deb, I can't speak for other folks. It means they they, they know what they're doing. So yeah. I know she, she had told us, uh, oh, I'd say maybe a year and a half ago or so, oh, my certifications are different. And, and I, yes, they are very different. Yes. Yes. I mean, I'm super glad I did it. I really, really am. Um, I learned a lot and, and I'm very proud to say I'm a Studio 180 certified instructor because I Absolutely. know what I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, now everyone does it. That's very, that's impressive. That's a, that's a daunting task. So as we're talking about tools, what are some of the quilting tools that you can't live without? Uh, okay, so I um, I thought about this. As, as a quilter, I am very much about embracing quilting, uh, piecing as expression, but I am, mm, I'm trying to figure out the right term. I always use the term pressing Nazi. I know that sounds very uh, harsh, but I am a firm believer in a well-pressed block. So my iron is one of my essentials, a good iron. There's just, there's just no replacing it. And then um, my other two things that I really, lo really love and I use across the board are gonna be um, my 24 inch long ruler because there is nothing more frustrating than trying to cut long strips with too short of a ruler. And then the 60 millimeter rotary cutter because that gives me a lot of latitude with the weight fabric that I cut and the, the number of, of layers that I cut. Um, and that allows me. So if I had to be alone on an island with three things, I guess it would be those three. Okay. Um, so let's kind of shift gears a little bit. What have you been doing since we all closed down in March? <laughs> I have been um, trying to pivot like a lot of us. So I've been working on new designs. I have a super secret project that is going to release next year um, that I am super excited about. It's another one of those passion projects, um, a little bit different from what folks know from me. Um, but I've been, I've been working on new patterns, new fabric line, um, and then that, that super secret project. And I'm getting into more online instruction as evidenced with what I'm doing with y'all. Yes. I think that's, that's what we're all doing. Um, 
So what are you finding is different compared to teaching online rather than teaching in person? So I was um, a little nervous about quilting instruction online because, uh, I mean, I think some of us are familiar with the, the pre-recorded classes that I, I've, I've got a craftsy class. So I've done all of that. I've done the, the whole pre-recording and, and that's very involved, but that doesn't allow for the, the feedback, the back and forth, the one-to-one, -one. you know, you're a student and you're watching a pre-recorded class. Now don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with them. They're great but you can't hold up your block and say, why is this not working? <laughs> so um, I do think that's one of the great things about the live classes. I have found that um, changing the pace of the class, you cannot operate, at least I can't operate at the same pace that I do in a live class. Um, because even though people are watching it and even though they have a bird's eye view, no bad seat, right? In fact, they can probably see better than they could in a class because it doesn't matter if you're the short one and you get stuck behind the tall people, you can still see because you're there in your own sewing space on your computer. But um, I guess because it's not face to face, you do need to go a little bit slower. And I find that um, there's more repetition. So go through it. Sure, we'll go through it again. We'll go through it again. Um, but overall, I have been pleasantly surprised with how people say how well it's working for them. I think folks like being in their own sewing space. I think that there are some real benefits to that. Um, you don't have to pack everything up and schlep it to wherever you're going. Um, if you forget something, all you got to do is turn around because it's right there, right? Um, so I think there's some real positives. I think that this is going to be a part of our staple, you know, our offerings now that people are, some people are going to want these online classes because they haven't been able to do face to face. But I th also think most people are probably like me, dying, <laughs> just dying to get back in a room with other people. <laughs> we were we were talking today in the office about how it, normally right now it's a fury of boxes. Quilts would be arriving for, uh, you know, to get ready for the show. We'd be having road booth merchandise, teacher supplies. Oh, I mean, the, the office would be crammed full of boxes and our doors locked and no one comes. And it is, it's a little depressing to not be uh, preparing to see everyone in person, but I, I trust that soon, hopefully next year in 2022, we're all going to be back together again. It might be a little different, but we'll be back together and sewing hands on again. Um, so let's talk about your run at home classes real quick before we wrap up. Okay. You're teaching um, to the point on Wednesday. Yes. Um, you want to give anybody some helpful hints or tips or why should they take that class? Oh my gosh. Okay. So I am teaching two of my guided improv classes. <clears throat> one is behind me and we'll talk about that one next, but to the point is one of my mid-century modern kind of vibe quilts and it uses guided improv. So when you look at that quilt, you're going to see 40 inch long diamonds and you're going to go, how the heck do I do that? And they weave in and out over and under each other. And you're going to be pleasantly surprised. It's not as hard as it looks. And I think you're going to love guided improv because it is improv quilting, but hence the name, it has some guidelines. So you're going to reasonably reproduce what I've done. So you're going to be amazed at, at the, at the, at the sharpness of those points, like pierce a finger kind of sharp super sharp points but you're gonna you're gonna find that it's so so easy and it's it's kind of like potato chips it gets a little addictive I'm just gonna say great well that's your Wednesday class your Thursday class is compass points that's the one behind me it is also guided improv so if you can see these compass stars usually when people make these they either use templates or they do paper piecing but I got to thinking after I did several diamond quilts with my guided improv, couldn't I do stars? And the answer is 
absolutely. Yes, you can. <laughs> you can do stars. Now they're improvish, so they're not perfect, but just looking at them, they look pretty darn good. I mean, if you were up close, you'd be like, oh yeah, I see you. That's a little off. But again, easy, easy, easy. No templates. So no, no other tools to buy, no paper to peel off the back. Yay. <laughs> so yes, a lot of fun. And your last class, your Saturday class is Mary's Contrary Garden. Yes, Mary's Contrary Garden. So that is, <clears throat> that is using a stitch and flip technique, which when I think about it, stitch and flip is like the um, maybe grandmother to improv quilting. Uh, stitch and flip is uh, kind of improvish. But what makes Mary's Contrary Garden so much fun is, is just that the, the, the blooms are so fun to make. You can have really rich, like um, those uh, full peony type blooms, or you could have loose, uh, loose uh, English garden type roses, you know, whatever you want your blooms to be. And it, it's just a bright, happy, fun quilt. So those are your road at home classes. Yes. Now, if you bear with me for just a second, I want to talk about your road to California in-person classes for 2022. Because okay. I think that's something people um, that, that we don't want people to lose sight of is that, yeah, we are still planning on, on having our show in 22. And for everyone who has already registered for that, event which we did start registration for um you are at their at their registrations are still active and they will they're holding their spots so that when we reopen registration they will you know some classes will already actually surprisingly enough be full that would be so, amazing. So tell me a little bit do you remember your in-person classes that I've fumbled uh, around I I think one of them, I think one of them is the same, but I don't remember if it's to the point or compass points, but I want to say one of them is the same. Compass um, points is the same. I just pulled it up. That's the class okay. being taught on Thursday. Okay, so compass points. Um, and what's going to happen is I have a derivative of this that I'll be able to share with students in the live class. So there is a derivative of this that adds even more element to it so i'm super excited about that so by the time we get to meet in person you're going to have uh you you're going to have firsthand uh access and you could opt to do that one instead um and then i can i have the list so friday is after the rain oh okay so after the rain i have a series of faux curved piecing quilts now i have nothing against curved piecing i think it's gorgeous but a lot of people are just like either they're intimidated by it or they don't have time for that business. So after the rain uses a faux curved piecing technique and the inspiration for this think about I'm sure some of you have seen the pictures in the of the desert after the rain all of these cacti just explode with blooms right? And they're, they're very bright and tropical looking. And so that's what this is. These are these faux curved pieced blooms that are um, a lot of fun to make. So that's what after the rain is. And then Saturday is winter woods. And winter woods is a um, long awaited release. It is also guided improv, but it is not compass points. It's not stars. It's not diamonds. It's trees. It's these big birch trees. And it's, it's just a different scale. And um, I'm, I'm really, really excited about that. And I think the pictures, aren't the pictures on your website? Um, the pictures will return to our website right now. Uh, the system set up to run both conferences at once, but there was a lot of confusion from people trying to figure out which conference there is. So we, we pulled the in-person down during Road at Home. The classes will reappear here probably in a couple of weeks after things get settled down a little bit. So yes, okay. I'll be able to pull those pictures up. Um, and your Sunday class is ins and outs. Ins and Outs is a, it, it's just a fun project. It uses strip piecing. It is quilt as you go, 
but because I try not to do anything too boring or too expected, you have some woven elements to it. So there are some strips, you're going to make tubes out of some of your two and a half inch strips, and then you're going to weave those tubes. You like that? It's a little, yeah. So that's what your strips are going to do. They're going to kind of weave in and out and they're at angles and it just adds a fun element to that, that strip pieced table set. And what I love is not being a math genius. I was able to figure out that you can make an entire table set. So a table runner, two placemats, four mug rugs, so you use one uh, two and a half inch strip set and and back uh, backing fabric. Boom. Wow. I know it is efficiency at its best. So that's awesome. So all of your in-person classes have brother machines provided. So if you're flying from across the country uh, in 2022, it won't be any problems. We have you all taken care of. Um, but Tammy, I just want to thank you for uh, spending some time chatting with us today. Um, just as a reminder, you can sign up for Tammy's um, Road at Home classes on the website right now. That's www.road2ca.com. And we will reopen registration for Road to California 2022 sometime early next year. So we hope everyone stays safe out there. Again, thank you so much for joining us. It was a great time getting to know you, and I hope to talk with you again real soon. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys.